this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes here to share with you some more jewelry thrifting here in Canada. I hope you're all doing very well. This um, bracelet attracted me because of the uh, copper uh, color and the uh, faux turquoise. Um, turns out this was a well-loved, um, let's see if I can get a part uh, to show you, well-loved magnetic bracelet. Um, I've cleaned it as best I can here on the inside, and that that is just corrosion from someone wearing it all the time. So this is probably not a bracelet that I will wear. Um, I thought it would clean up better, but it, it was quite an attractive design. I may find ways of repurposing these links. Um, they're just on a, like a stretchy cord, um, but they could be uh, attached or glued to something in a lovely design and this would be given a whole uh, new lease on life. A while back if you've been following my videos uh, I was encouraged to you know get out and look for more necklaces if I wasn't finding necklaces and I, it, I think it's kind of like um, what do they call that? When you put the intention out in the universe and it comes back with things for you. This is a necklace. It's a very long necklace. Um, I haven't really measured it. Um, but uh, it's got to be at least 36 inches. Here you can see some of it. Um, and I'm going to just double it up yet again and uh, hopefully you'll get a better taste of all the uh, the lusciousness. So we have um, gunmetal uh, filigree balls, small and large. We have uh, faux plastic pearls in pink, uh, green, orange, and um, uh, beige, but they're all the same value, so they don't you know, you, you could imagine if this was baby pink, this just wasn't going to work, right? Um, if this was mint green. Totally um, a nice subdued quality to this. And then finally, we have uh, these little double-sided uh, cabochons um, in a metal ring in blues. And then oval, faceted, mirrored cabochons uh, in rings as well. So a lot going on on the necklace because of its length. There's no clasp. Um, I'm sure it's um, modern, um, but that doesn't bother me. It doesn't have to be vintage. It has a vintage feel to it, a vintage vibe, um, and very wearable with the uh, kind of colors that I wear um, in the fall and in the winter. And on my necklace trend... I'm going to move this back just a bit more so you can see this one. This um, looks like a very well made, handmade wire necklace. There, I can get the whole thing up, and that's better. Um, glass stones. I don't think they are any precious uh, stone, but beautiful copper color, beautiful copper wiring, nice copper chain. Nice length. It's a little bit long for some of the dresses I like to wear things with. And then a very nice uh, handmade closure. The hook and then the eye, the rings here, with this little spiral dangle on the back. So this could be uh, manufactured, um, but it looks um, to me like just good quality um, handmade jewelry. And uh, there's a wire worker, Abby Hook, in England, um, whose work I uh, follow. And I have uh, one piece of her jewelry. And uh, this is the quality of the uh, work that she does. Only she uses um, semi-precious stones and real pearls. So, a nice necklace. Another necklace. Okay, so this at first sight is a seed bead necklace with uh, a very 
lightweight uh, lobster claw clasp. Um, there's a nice um, sort of uh, peacock finish on those seed beads. Um, but what really sold me on the necklace were, were these three, um, what I'm convinced are lapis stones. Um, lapis is um, affordable enough if you're just going to use three pieces like this on a, on a necklace. So it's a nice configuration. There's the gold flecking in the lap pieces of lapis. There's some reasonable, um, you know, faceted round beads. I doubt these are silver, but I suppose they could be silver. These are tarnished uh, caps. They could be just uh, metal or it's possible they're silver. Um, I would have to find a way of testing them and I don't own a tester at this point. Um, but I purchased this more for the uh, lapis beads, the value of the lapis beads. Um, and uh, then I can take this apart and I uh, use these with other lapis um, stones that I have. And then this necklace. So again, I think these things tend to tangle. This is a necklace that has some um, uh, agate stones. It's on a, might be leather. No, it looks, well, yeah, it's on a leather cord. Um, so not the, the usual type of necklace I would purchase, but as these gorgeous Tibetan style beads with the uh, coral and turquoise colored plastic inserts in the, the beads and these lovely orange agate stones. Um, I don't think these ones that are on uh, the top are, are uh, carnelian. I think they're agate just by the inclusions in them. These black stones could be onyx. Um, there's no markings that say any of this is silver, um, but I'm not too worried. I like the style of the beads, and I'll be able to, uh, excuse me, I'll be able to repurpose this, um, even just to take it off the, um, to take off the leather cord part um, and put a, a lovely silver chain um, would be an enhancement for this. So look at this beautiful line, uh, what do we call that? Banded agate, with the, done in the circle, and then just the, the variety of the color in the stones makes this amazing. And then I have a couple of bracelets. I already showed you one um, magnetic bracelet and you can see from the little inserts on the back of this, these little round inserts, this is another magnetic bracelet. This one however is in perfect condition. Look at the little uh, chevrons or hearts, the silver and gold tone, um, the lovely matte and silver and the shiny gold. Uh, fold over clasp, it's not marked with uh, any maker's mark. Um, but it's all in, in first rate condition, a lovely little bracelet. And I just like the design. I, it didn't matter to me that it was a, a magnetic bracelet. I just thought that it was lovely. And then this bracelet, nice shiny silver. It might be rhodium plated. Um, I haven't looked. I own a uh, sterling silver charm bracelet, pretty much like this design. This one is a very shiny, but it is marked sterling. I can get that in the. You can see that there, sterling, and then there's a. Uh, a mark above it that I haven't really explored. So I'll try to take some pictures and then uh, let you know more about it. It has the little um, little safety on the side. And there's only one charm on this. And the charm is not marked, but it's unusual. It is the um, 
the Mercantile Bank of Canada. And uh, nothing I'd ever heard about. Let me back a little bit to focus it. There we go, the Mercantile Bank of Canada. So that's something, too, that I can research in when I have some spare time. Um, seems like I'm always looking something up. Um, so the Mercantile Bank of Canada. Let's see if we can focus this better. Sorry, camera, you're just not doing what I need you to do today. Oh, there we go. That's better. So the Mercantile Bank of Canada. Sorry if things up till now have been a little blurry. Cause I didn't really notice that. I'm so uh, focused on the jewelry, I forget to look at the the uh, video as it's uh, being recorded. So here again, the um, the manufacturers or the makers mark and the letters STER, S T E R for sterling on the back. Um, this could be faux. I haven't tested it. it just it just looks. Um, like a brand new or rhodium plated um, sterling charm bracelet. I guess this is the end for um, this group of jewelry purchases. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I found. Uh, and if you have any comments, please leave them. I'm always happy to correspond with you. Um, share these videos with your friends. And if you uh, have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the comments. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastime, and I hope you have a really good rest of the day. Thank you.